for whatever reason, you did some design work at home for a company you work for. Now, another company wants a copy of the drawings. This seemingly simple situation has some very complicated answers, and we're gonna do our best to dive into them today. What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machine and Tool, back here again for Practical Machinist. And today on Shop Talk, we're gonna be diving back into the Practical Machinist forums to tackle a poster who came on with exactly this scenario. But before we do, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Let's get into it. Okay guys, so today as promised on Shop Talk, we are going to be diving into a seemingly simple scenario that has some very complicated and very potentially large ramifications. We were on the shop management and ownership subform of the Practical Machinist Forms, one of my favorite places to check out. Um, it's one of the best resources to not only get questions answered, but to read through posts like this that uh, other people ask because some scenarios like this you may not encounter every day. So it's good to get some background on them before they happen. So if you do find yourself in them, it can be very helpful to help you navigate that. So a poster came on to the shop management and ownership subform with a scenario, a bit of a situation on his hands. What had happened was, and this is making a long story short, this was a very long post, so I'm gonna try to parse it the best I can and just try to keep it as simple as possible. But a poster came on and put the scenario forth as this. He is a machinist. He's not a designer, he's not a CAD programmer, he's not a CAD designer, he's a machinist. That is his role, and he, he said the way he described it, that he works at a mid-size machine shop. Not a huge company, not a tiny company, you know, middle of the road. And what had happened was, and I'm kind of parsing out what he said because some of it was left very vague and that could be intentional to try to protect himself, you know, so people don't know what company he works for or you know, he didn't want to be identified. So some of this is vague, but this is the best I could interpret it. So he had a scenario come up where, for whatever reason, he did some design work at home for a company. Um, wasn't exactly clear what he was designing, but as a machinist, he went home with his own CAD package at home. He owned it, it's his package at home. He went and did some design work. Now, where it gets tricky is that Basically what happened was, this came up, the company said, in his words, yeah, you can do it at home, but you're not gonna get paid for it. And this guy said he put something like 100 hours into this, 100 hours into designing this on his own time that he was not paid for. Where it gets even stickier is he said he has a friend or something that works at another company, company B, they found out that he did this work and he has the, whatever these holy grail designs are and they want a copy of them. So he works for company A, did this work on his own time for company A, now company B wants a copy of the designs. He was pretty adamant that he felt like he was entitled to send these drawings along to his friend that works at another company, but he thought to himself, ah, do you know what? This seems like a bit of a weird situation. I'm gonna come on to the Practical Machines forums and see what they think. Now, if you've been listening closely to this scenario, there's not really one issue at play here. There's many. There are a lot of layers to this and a lot of red flags went up for a lot of people in this thread, myself included, very quickly. The first red flag that was raised by just about everybody there, myself included, sky high, was hold on. You did over 100 hours of work for free on your own time at home that you didn't get paid for. This is huge, huge red flag. Um, I don't know how it is at your guys' shop, but at my shop, a standard working week is 44 hours. If you go over 44 hours, that's overtime. So when you kind of parse this out, this guy did over two weeks of full time and another 22 hours of overtime or 12 hours of overtime for free on his own time. The poster kind of defended this because people obviously called this out pretty quickly. 
He defended this by saying that, no, do you know what? He's a bit of a go-getter. Um, he chose to do this on his own time. Um, and the company said, you know, you can do it if you want. So he said, you know what? I'm gonna do it to get ahead. And right off the bat, guys, taking initiative in this industry is amazing. Taking initiative to do things without being asked is amazing. That said, there is a very, very hard line between being a go-getter and you know, maybe you're mowing your lawn and you're thinking about how am I gonna optimize that tool path or you know, you're working out and you're thinking to yourself, how am I gonna fixture this? That's one thing. It's another thing to do two weeks plus of work. This is work on your own time without being paid for it. Very big line between being, you know, taking initiative and that. Firstly, if you're working for a company and you don't own that company, because obviously things get kind of murky and gray if you own the company, you know, you're never on the clock, you're never off the clock, it's just kind of one big thing. If you're working for a company, you generally have a work agreement. Um, and that work agreement is you work, you get paid. I don't expect my guys to come in, work, and not get paid, and you shouldn't either. I have to kind of parse the situation out. I have had guys here that have CAD CAM packages at home um, and they have asked me before, hey listen, uh, I just don't have time today. Is it okay if I work on this at home after hours? That question, the answer, my answer to that question is dependent on a few factors. The first of which is, is this design or drawing that they're gonna be working on, is it proprietary? Is it controlled? Do we have an NDA for it? If any of those things exist, that is a non-starter. Um, as a company, we have uh, non-disclosure agreements, NDAs. We work with proprietary drawings, so you know a company has created this drawing for a product they developed, and we also have you know agreements that say we need to protect drawings. If we're doing something in house, that's one thing. You know, if it's a fixture that we're building for something we're going to use, that's one thing. But if it's any of these kind of controlled drawings right away that is a non-starter you cannot do that at home from my perspective that reasoning behind that is if that drawing gets leaked if that gets saved improperly it's going to be a huge headache uh, we have a legal obligation to protect drawings like that and to protect intellectual property like that with every ounce of care that we can and letting drawings leave the building in some cases is enough to trigger that we are not doing everything we can so right off the bat, if it's anything like that, my initial answer will always be no. The second point would be, if I was considering that situation, do I trust that person to do the work? This is again, a bit of a non-starter because, you know, I don't hire people that I can't trust and I don't hire people that, you know, we can't build that mutual relationship of trust. Obviously, if you hire someone coming in the door, you gotta build that trust. But I like to think that everybody here, we have a mutual trust that we establish and if that trust breaks down, it's just not a good working relationship anymore. You know, I, my guys self-report their hours. Um, I trust them that they are keeping track of it. So if I trust the person can go and do this work on their own time and be accurate and fair in the reporting of hours, I may approve it. That said, you know, if a situation ever came up where I'm like, you're just not good for this job, um, if there was any kind of trust issue there, again, I wouldn't put that person in a position where their trust would be questioned. Why go down that road? It's just gonna open up doors that don't need to be opened. The third thing is, is is, there a, is this a good use of their time off the clock? Um, work, whether you're doing it in the shop or whether you're doing it at home, it's still work. And if you're doing work, you are not doing other things that are important in your life. Um, there are people out there who have fantastic work ethic, the drive to work all the time, and they will work themselves until they burn out or they will take on so much at work that their home life starts to fall apart. Or you know they don't have time to do their laundry, they don't have time to mow the lawn, they don't have time to hang out with their spouse or their kids. Some people have that amazing work ethic where they almost need someone to kind of gauge them down a bit and remind them that, listen, you gotta take care of everything else. Myself included, you, know, I, you gotta be very aware of yourself that you're not taking on too much. So if I feel like, listen, you've already put in overtime this week, you don't need more overtime. It's not a money thing. It's a, you need time to go home and not be working. Uh, that's another scenario where I will probably say no. That said, if a person volunteers for it, it's something they want to do, and all those other scenarios play out, 
I will always approve this uh, if they want to do it. I will pay them overtime for it. It's not like, you know, this is expected for free. With all of that said, that entire scenario that we just walked through has happened maybe three times in the last three years. It's just not the way I like to do business. It's not the way I like to run my company. Um, for me, when you're here, you're working. When you're not, go do everything else. You know, you work to live, not live to work. But that's kind of the way it goes. As many others said, it does feel good and noble to feel like you are doing work to help the company and you know, you are taking initiative to do things. It's still not a scenario you wanna get into all the time, even if you're getting paid for it, because it's just not a healthy work-life balance. So bringing it back to the question that was asked, does he own the drawings? Can he send this? What kind of scenario is this? Doing work like this at home can create exactly the kind of problem you're seeing. Um, on the question of whether this guy owns the drawings or not, it is a very tricky situation and one that you really never want to find yourself in. As another poster said on the forums, I thought this was a very apt way of putting it. The law, as it rules in a lot of areas, especially when it comes to intellectual property, the law does not necessarily equal justice. So just because you think something should be the way it is, does not necessarily mean the way the law is written or the way the law works for that topic. We all like to think that because the person did this work on their own time, you know, he took a home, he did it on his computer with his CAD package on his own time, that he owns the drawings and he can do whatever he wants with it because it was his labor and he is entitled to it. That kind of falls apart in scenarios like this. Firstly, a lot of contracts and work agreements out there specify that anything you create whether on your own time, whether written, oral, uh, intellectual, anything you create that relates to the business is property of that business. This may sound exploitive and can definitely be exploitive, but this kind of precedent exists, exists for a reason. And that reason is that it prevents someone from taking internal IP or intellectual property, developing it, tweaking it on their own time, and then selling it. Companies invest a lot of money into intellectual property. Something as simple as knowing who my client list is or who, how we run this one job or you know, we figured out a way to make this one job run really well. If that got out to a competitor, they could undercut that company and all of a sudden that company is in a bad spot. Basically it prevents for like a scenario, if a company makes this one kind of component, you know, they make these little components here, for instance, it prevents someone at that company with malicious intent from going home saying, hmm, do you know what? I'm gonna make a new fixture to make this super, super efficient and then turning around and instead of bringing that back to the company, taking it over to another company and saying, hey, do you wanna undercut that company over there and make these for a lot less than they're doing it? It prevents that from happening because otherwise that could happen all the time and even with these laws in place, that kind of thing happens all the time. So that's the reason these laws exist. I definitely do not necessarily agree that it is always used in a ethical way. I think it can be very stifling to innovation, but that's why these kind of laws exist. What makes this situation even more complicated, as this guy kind of said in the replies, is that the original poster did imply, I don't want to say they claimed, they implied that the company said that they could do this on their own time, but they would not be paid for it. That opens up a whole new can of worms in that scenario. If you're being paid for something and you create intellectual property, 100% that is owned by the company. If the company says you can do it on your own time but not be paid for it, again, probably owned by the company. Uh, does the company have the case that, you know, the guy said he had to go take measurements from certain parts or something in the company to do these drawings? Because the initial seed of this was owned by the company, does the company own those drawings now? There's enough of a case that, do you want to open this Pandora's box? Possibly, maybe. The point is, through this whole thing, and as other people pointed out, is that the poster who asked this question should have never gotten themselves in this scenario. This whole situation never should have happened. Uh, I definitely don't want to veer into uh, victim blaming, territory here because I don't know if this guy is being exploited or if he's 
being completely honest. You never know with these kind of scenarios. But as I've said before on this kind of, on this series, on this topic, is that you are responsible for looking out for your best interests. We all like to think we're working for and with rational, normal, thinking, you know, good people, but people get weird and companies get weird when things like money, time, intellectual property, liability, all those things are on the line. Um, it is up to you to look out for your own best interests at all times. You can't rely on anybody else to do it. This scenario is convoluted to the point that even if the poster does theoretically somehow own these drawings, I guess the question that I was asking and other people were asking in this thread was, what is the upside? What is the upside? So he gets to help out his friend at a competitor's company. Is he gonna get, is there some kind of backdoor deal happening here that he's not talking about that the company B wants to buy the drawings? I just don't see the upside for this guy besides you know, a point of pride that he made these drawings so he owns them and he can do with them what he wants. I don't see an upside to this uh, for this guy in sending the drawings along. I think it opens them up to a ton of liability. I think it opens them up to lawsuits. And at the very least, he's not gonna be a trusted person at that company should that company decide that he was in the wrong. It's just not gonna help his working arrangement. In conclusion, he should have been compensated for this work if he was doing it for the company. Um, if the company had asked him to do it for free, he should have said no. Uh, and it would have prevented this entire scenario from happening. So it's really important if you do find yourself in this scenario to make sure that you are looking out for your own best interests to prevent a hugely complicated scenario like this from happening. Have you ever found yourself in this situation? Have you ever done work at home that you've either brought into work or for a company do you have any experience with this kind of scenario? I would love to know in the comments below because it was certainly thought provoking and a little sad to see someone potentially be out over 100 hours. But I'd love to know in the comments below if you've been in this scenario, how you handled it and what happened. In any case, guys, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Thank you very much for watching, guys. You take care.